The next pathogen in my microbiology series is Listeria monocytogenes. This is a gram-positive rod. It's catalase positive, beta hemolytic. It's a facultative intracellular, and it's aerobic. Human infection usually occurs in pregnant patients, and on your board exams, I would be pretty confident that the patient they'll give you in the vignette will be pregnant, but it can also occur in immunocompromised individuals, so keep that in mind as well. The clinical disease that it causes is usually going to be one of the following, sepsis, neonatal meningitis, gastroenteritis, or in the case of a pregnant patient, spontaneous abortion. Historically, the two things that listeria is associated with uh, are one, deli meats, and two, unpasteurized dairy products. Okay, so keep those in the back mind. Listeria has two major virulence factors. One is called actin polymerization. You could see this written out as act A. It means the same thing. What this is, is a quote rocket tail, and that's a buzzword, so keep that in mind as well, that asymmetrically connects from the listeria to the host cytoskeleton and once connected propels the listeria between cells okay now this is really important to remember so i have a really silly mnemonic to memorize this the monologue in act one propelled your career mono for monologue reminds me of monocytogenes so i know that we're talking about listeria ACT from ACT1 reminds me of actin polymerization, so I know that we're talking about this specific virulence factor, and propelled your career to remind me that the whole purpose of actin polymerization in listeria is to propel the pathogen between cells. So this is the first major virulence factor. The other thing that you want to keep in mind is that listeria is really good at surviving at low temperatures, and this explains the association between listeria and unpasteurized dairy products and deli meats. So usually if you buy deli meat, if you buy dairy products and you refrigerate them, you might be thinking to yourself, well, the food's not gonna go bad, it's refrigerated. But the reason that Listeria is highly associated with those foods is that even when you refrigerate them, Listeria becomes really good at surviving and replicating at low temperatures. Let's talk briefly about why. So at low temperatures specifically, listeria induces RNA helicase. So when it senses those low temperatures, the RNA helicase activity actually speeds up. And so it stimulates replication at those low temperatures. It also produces biofilms, and it has a very powerful flagella that is especially active at low temperatures. And so to summarize here, when the temperature is low, RNA helicase kicks in, biofilms are produced, and the flagella becomes extra active. So essentially, when you refrigerate something that could have listeria in it, you're encouraging the growth of that listeria. So you wanna, again, keep in mind deli meats and unpasteurized dairy products. And for this reason, pregnant patients are usually told to avoid those foods during their pregnancy. As far as clinical features goes, we already touched on this, but what diseases you could see are meningitis, and specifically neonatal meningitis, encephalitis, gastroenteritis, and pregnant patients should avoid, like I said, deli meats and unpasteurized foods. As far as treatment goes, all you want to know is that ampicillin is first-line treatment. So if you see listeria on your exam, the answer should be ampicillin. Here's the summary slide. Again, rod-shaped, gram-positive, beta-hemolytic, catalase-positive, facultative intracellular. Two major virulence factors. One, act A, that uh, propels the listeria. It's a rocket tail. Keep that buzzword in mind because it still shows up. And then low temperature survival. Remember that RNA helicase gets induced, the flagella is extra active, and biofilms are produced. That's all.